Welcome back to Session Zero, my name is Brian. In today's video, I want to discuss fleshing out your NPCs with AIMS, an acronym I coined back in 2016. If you want to find out what AIMS stands for and how I use it, please stay tuned. What are your NPCs AIMS was an article I wrote for Gnome Stew back at the end of 2016. I then changed it a little bit for my ACE Adventure Design Method, which I published at the end of 2017. I've linked both of those below, but I'm going to go over AIMS completely in this video. I'll generate a skeleton NPC with my Dungeon World Oracle deck, also linked below, and then flesh it out with AIMS. So let me describe what AIMS stands for, and then I'll discuss each component a little later. The word AIMS is a synonym for goals, and that's the first part of the acronym AIMS. The A stands for Agenda, also a synonym for goal. The I in AIM stands for Instinct, and I'll define it very much as Dungeon World does. M also comes from Dungeon World and stands for Moves. And finally, the S is for Secrets. That's AIMS in a nutshell, so let me generate an NPC to which I can apply it and explain each part. I've demonstrated how I use my Dungeon World Oracle deck in a few videos for world building and solo play, and I've linked that playlist in the upper right corner of your screen and in the description below. Today I'm just going to draw three cards for an NPC, because this gives me a lot of information from which to choose. The first thing I want to do with these three cards is pull a name from one, a trait from another, and a person from a third, and I'm going to arrange them in that order for two reasons. First, doing so gives me an automatic shorthand for the NPC in a format common to several RPGs, which is name, comma, adjective noun. In this case, I get Elsie, stubborn brewer. And this gives me enough to improvise her in a pinch, but is also only part of the skeleton, like the rib cage. For the full skeleton, let's dig a little deeper. I'll also pull a GM move for Elsie, an alignment, a thing, and this is the second reason to have the cards in this order, her resources. One of the first hacks I ever made for Dungeon World was randomizing a character's coin using 3d6 in a way that gave your character a chance to be in debt, be broke, or have some coin. The math is d6 minus 3 times 2d6, and I'll perform that math straight across these 3d6s. 2 minus 3 is negative 1, times 6 is negative 6. Elsie is in debt, but to whom and why? For those answers, I'll look to two sources. First, the context of my solo play story. Context is super important when making sense of random elements. I can't stress enough how important context can be. Please consider watching those videos. I'd say her brewery was on the outskirts of the city destroyed by the comet, so she's lost nearly everything. I also want to look at the alignments I can choose from and see what Dungeon World tells us about those alignments. These cards contain neutral, lawful, and good, and this is what the game says they mean for characters. I'll go with lawful here, because I like choose honor over personal gain, and I think that tells me why she's in debt. Now, when I wrote the thing field for the oracle deck, I thought of this staff as a physical item, like a wizard staff. But we don't have to be that literal. Let's use staff to mean her brewery staff, her employees. And let's read the D6 on this card as a D3 and say there are three employees. I think when her business was destroyed by the catastrophe, she promised her staff she'd take care of them, at least until she was able to open shop here, wherever here is. So she's in debt to an innkeeper where she's putting up her staff. And I'll let you create the innkeeper. I think that's a great skeleton to start with, but let's look at aims to add some flesh. We can start with a quick recap describing the skeleton of this character. Elise, stubborn brewer. When her brewery was destroyed by an impacting comet, she promised her staff she'd take care of them until she could open a new one in a new city. This is her background. In the Ace Adventure Design Method, I mentioned that you don't have to follow the steps in order. I'll follow that advice here and go straight to her secret. I'll discuss secrets in regards to player characters in my next Muse Day Tuesday video, but for NPCs, a secret is just something they don't want others to know. In this case, her secret is that she's in debt. Next, look at her instinct. In Dungeon World, a monster or NPC's instinct is a guide to how you can use them in the fiction, and we'll do the same here. Based on her backstory and alignment, I think Elisa's instinct is clearly to help others. Of course, that means she'll help NPCs when she can, 
But this is an important part of her. She's just as likely to help PCs when she can as well. Next, let's think about her agenda. Agenda is an NPC's most important goal and can be broken down into smaller steps. We know from her backstory that she'll be trying to open a new brewery here, so let's make sure that's reflected in her agenda. I think she needs her ale recipes from her former brewery in the destroyed city, so she'll try to hire someone to get them. I specifically use the word hire because it conflicts with her secret. How can she hire someone if she's already in debt? The same goes for the second step in her agenda. How will she buy a building? The second step gives you an idea about where you might find a lease as well. She's likely going to be looking for rundown buildings to buy. When those two steps of her agenda are complete, she can start a brewery here. Finally, let's look at her moves. Like monster moves in Dungeon World, NPC moves are simple statements about what the NPC does, but aren't the only things they can do. The instinct and moves work together to tell you how the NPC behaves without scripting out every line of dialogue. I think she'll stubbornly refuse to pay in advance for anyone she hires. But she'll also be very kind and motherly to people, maybe getting them to do things for her without pay. And for her last move, do you remember when I said we'd choose a GM move for Elise too? When someone does retrieve her recipes, she's going to reveal the unwelcome truth that she can't pay them. But let's not forget that Elsie is lawful. She will make good on her debt, you just don't know when. So that's it. That's how you can use my Dungeon World Oracle deck with Ace Adventure Design Method to flesh out NPCs. Try a few yourself and see what you come up with. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it. Don't forget to share and subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified of my new videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.